Welcome back to our video workshop. In this section, part eight, we ask the question, what keeps a great trail great? The answer is effective management and maintenance. That's right, successful long-term management and maintenance is the key driver in every step of the process. From the initial conception of the trail, to planning, design, and implementation. Let's talk about managing first. One of our primary goals of these workshops is to provide proven tools that result in durable, quality trails instead of management nightmares. It's critical that your entire team understands all the considerations in a given scenario in order to make informed choices. This process can be complex, and sometimes there's not a clear choice between one option over another. But by going through the process, it almost always leads to an outcome that's better for the riders and the resources. At this point, you've learned a lot about planning and managing a great trail. Now, let's talk about how to maintain the trail so it can be enjoyed for the long run. Not some, but all trails need maintenance every year, even if it's only to check on the trail's condition. If we've done our job right locating and designing the trail properly, then we've minimized the amount and rate of degradation. Nevertheless, degradation has occurred, and it's up to us to repair the impact it's had on the trail. Maintenance is so important to the Great Trail Continuum. Implement maintenance correctly, and it can perpetuate a great trail. Implement it incorrectly, and it can destroy a great trail. When we clearly define the maintenance requirements, we give the managers and maintenance personnel the information they need to be effective. Some of the tools we use to maintain trails are rolling dips, rock armoring, and trail hardening. First, rolling dips. These are man-made grade reversals constructed on existing trails with long, sustained grades or steep grades to reduce the size of the tread watershed. They are also used in new construction where there is no other opportunity to reverse the grade to provide drainage. The key to rolling dips is just that. Keep them rolling. Any man-made structure requires maintenance. A rolling dip will never be as effective and as maintenance-free as a grade reversal. Don't make the dips too short or the rider will feel like they're falling into a hole. Make sure there's enough distance between the sag and the crest. Three to four vehicle lengths is a good target to aim for. Rock armoring a rolling dip with mechanically compacted crushed aggregate can make it more effective and longer lasting, especially in non-cohesive soils like sand or cobble rock or a mix of sand and rock. Exactly. What this does is reduce the velocity of water, making it easier to divert it off the trail. Rock armoring also hardens the trail tread, which reduces rutting and protects the crest of the hill from displacement. Trail hardening can be used to help protect subsurface resources too. These structures not only help protect the resource, they can greatly enhance the quality of the riding experience. Structures help provide a win-win scenario. There are two types of trail hardening, geosynthetics and rock, also known as gravel and stoning. Geosynthetics are synthetic polymers that are woven or formed into a variety of shapes. These materials perform six major functions, reinforcement, separation, drainage, filtration, containment, and erosion control. It's important to maintain cover over geosynthetics because they don't play well with tires. A layer of geosynthetics is used for separation and prevents good material like crushed rock from intermixing with poor materials like soft or saturated soil. When used for trail hardening, the geosynthetic insulation must be wider than the design trail width. The more the load is centered, the more effective the bearing will be. This keeps the tires off the shoulders of the insulation, which protects them from displacement. A less expensive and often easier way to harden soft spots on a trail is with gravel and stoning. A well-graded crushed rock works the best since the fine components fill in the voids between the rocks and crushed angles lock the whole mass together. Because crushed rock binds together so well, it's more impervious to water, which helps prevent further saturation of the underlying soil layer. Stoning works well in soft, non-cohesive soils and in seasonal wet areas. It doesn't work in perpetually saturated soils. Some of the benefits of stoning include increased weight capacity and decreased rutting and displacement. It reduces or eliminates trail widening or braiding by creating a firm trail tread. It protects the underlying soil layer from erosion, thus reducing sedimentation. It's rough and doesn't form rills, so it reduces the velocity of the surface water, which makes it easier to drain water off the trail, and by being more durable, it increases the interval between required tread maintenance. Keep in mind that the need for stabilization and hardening can be a red flag indicating poor trail location, excessive grade, or poor soils. Sometimes, it's better to look for alternatives that require less managing in the long run. 
there are some scenario exercises to complete based on what we've just covered. We hope the information you've learned during this video workshop series results in durable, quality trails that are blast to ride and easier to manage and maintain. We appreciate your participation and invite you to reach out with any questions or suggestions you might have. And remember, for complete details on everything we've covered and more, the Great Trails Guidebook is your ultimate resource. Creating a positive future for responsible OHV recreation is what it's all about. We'll see you on the trail. Thanks again.